Thank, thank you very much. Senator Rounds. Thank you, Madam Chair. And let me just, first of all, say thank you for doing this hearing today for both of you. The, uh, the, the AI working group, when, when we started the program, one of the things that we talked about was is we wanted every single uh, committee to be able to participate because of the expertise on the committees and the individuals who participated in, in, in meetings like this to share their points of view and their recommendations. So I really appreciate your jumping on as early as you have. You're probably one of the first subcommittees to actually have a, a significant uh, opportunity to talk about a specific area in, in which AI does make a, a difference. Um, and, and I also want to say, um, Ms. Rice, what you've indicated in terms of the, the personnel issue is something that we have to, to take into account. And we're never going to have enough experts on this. And so to be able to share those experts is one of the reasons why NIST, I think, is going to be very important, being a location where we can find individuals from industry who can come in and participate and help to bring that expertise to the committees as well as to the organizations responsible for overseeing AI development. I also wanted to, Mr. Schmidt, I just, I think you would agree with me on this, but I, I want to get your thoughts. I think that a company is responsible and has to abide by the Fair Credit Reporting Act, the Fair Housing Act, the Equal Credit Opportunity Act, regardless of what technology that they are using, AI or otherwise, correct? So, correct. So, so, so really, one of the challenges we've got is how do we make sure that within an algorithm or within a decision-making process, because AI really is simply a very, very fast decision-making process that is now available to us, but one in which a computer system uh, and a use of formulas actually learns from itself whether or not it was making correct decisions and modifies it, uh, as uh, Dr. Perry indicated, can, can modify itself along the way. And so what I'm curious about is, is I think it's, I don't think we can be afraid of the technology, but I think we've got to be able to leverage the best of it, while at the same time being able to um, provide the regulators the ability to ask the questions and to, um, to make modifications or request modifications should there be biases identified. Can you think of any program that we've ever made that doesn't have some biases built into it? No. So really the, the challenge for us is how do we identify those biases? And in fact, any, any adult who is responsible for making decisions today, is there a human that doesn't have biases built into their decision making? I've yet to meet one. Yeah. So really the, the question for us is, is how do we overcome those human attributes and allow a machine to do a better job of making decisions that eliminates the biases that we're trying to get out of, of, of our decision-making processes. Fair enough? Uh, yes. Okay. Um, let me just, uh, I know that we're gonna have a lot of discussions about the problems and the challenges that we're gonna have anytime we bring in a new, a new type of technology, but I wanted to, 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 to close with this. Um, and it's gonna come right back down to what Ms. Ms. Rice had indicated. Suitable AI talent is gonna be in high demand. JP Morgan said in May of 2023 that it had hired 900 data scientists, 600 machine learning engineers, and 200 AI researchers to execute its technology initiatives. Google has hired thousands of researchers and engineers to work on machine learning and AI. However, I believe that it's critical that AI solutions reach beyond our largest companies. We learned at the end of the last year that between 2022 and 2023, the number of people experiencing homelessness on a given night increased in the United States by 12% to 653,104 people. The highest number of people recorded since the inception of the annual count in 2007. Researchers have used AI to identify individuals most at risk for losing their housing to target with homelessness prevention assistance. Now, I, I think this is one of the things that we should do a better job on 
and if we can eliminate some of the 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 challenges we have just in terms of the number of individuals that we have to impact ai could actually help us identify those individuals before they become homeless mr schmidt could you discuss what steps we need to take now to provide the ai workforce of tomorrow and how we make certain that ai talent is reaching areas like homelessness prevention to address the, the latter half of your question, I think that uh, it's very important that we encourage organizations like uh, Ms. Ms. Rice's as well as academia and the type of work that, that Ms. Perry is doing because quite frankly, industry is not likely to jump on those sorts of things. And we, we have to put the incentives in the right places and give the right people the right money uh, and, and ability to put forward those sorts of uh, programs. So that's what I would say about that. And then in terms of the talent gap, what we really need to do is concentrate on both STEM and liberal arts. Uh, what we need are well-rounded people. I've, I've worked in tech type companies my entire career and I've always liked hiring English majors and history majors and teaching them how to do statistics because they're the ones who are really thoughtful. And so what we want to do is we want to encourage that. We want to encourage an educational system that is focused on questioning things, really getting into why are we doing things, and then the technology is secondary. That you can learn, I, my company actually, so I founded it four years ago. The first Python program I ever wrote became my company. And so I learned that, you know, I guess can keep an old, teach an old dog uh, new <laughs> tricks. I learned it later. And I think that many people can learn those kinds of things if they're given the right education to start with. Thank you, thank you. And thank you for your leniency on the time today, Madam Chair. Thank you, Senator Round. Senator Warnock. Thank you, Madam Chair and A 